e compromissione dello stato di coscienza. Questo non vuol dire assolutamente, tecnicamente non si può parlare di stato di coma. Le condizioni generali cardiorespiratorie e metaboliche del Santo Padre si mantengono sostanzialmente invariate e pertanto sono gravissime. Dall'alba di oggi, questa mattina, è stata osservata un'iniziale compromissione dello stato di coscienza. Stamane, alle ore 7.30, è stata celebrata la Santa Messa alla presenza del Papa. Eh, queste informazioni che vi do sono aggiornate alle 9 di questa mattina, ma ho chiamato adesso e non c'è nulla da cambiare. Grazie. Nella serata di ieri, tardi, probabilmente, probabilmente il Papa aveva in mente i giovani da lui incontrati in tutto il mondo lungo il percorso del suo pontificato. Questo probabilmente suggerito anche perché al Papa gli era stato spiegato eh, le persone che c'erano in quel momento in piazza, soprattutto, soprattutto i gruppi di giovani. Infatti sembrava far riferimento ad essi, ai giovani, quando dalle sue parole in più riprese si è potuta ricostruire la seguente frase. Vi ho cercato, adesso voi siete venuti da me e per questo vi ringrazio. I think that's great and I think that's very smart of him because the young people um, are the future of the church and when he speaks to them and inspires them, then hopefully it's going to take on Christ's message and give hope to a new generation. Can you, can you tell me about this? Can you just yes, uh, I, I received a, a call about 9.20 or so in the morning from uh, Archbishop uh, Jeevish, the Pope's personal secretary. He's been his secretary for 38 years, long before he became Pope. Uh, he called me and said, can you come over? And I said, I'll come right over. So I went right over, and uh, he took me right into the Pope's... Uh, bedroom uh, where he was in bed. He was propped up. There were <clears throat> three doctors alongside of him helping him, uh, giving him help with the breathing and so on. And, um, but the Pope was, uh, was completely conscious and completely alert. Uh, he couldn't speak, but when he saw me uh, with his eyes and, and And, and bowing his head, I knew he immediately recognized me and was trying to greet me. So I knelt down alongside of him by the bed and I kissed his hand and held his hand. And I told him in Polish that I had offered mass for him and that I was praying for him. And uh, in the meantime, these other, the three doctors were on the other side of the bed. So I wasn't there too long and then Archbishop Jeeves poked me and said, you know, maybe better to go now. So when I left, I just, you know, I'm, I'm a priest, so I just automatically gave him a blessing. And when I did, he, he blessed himself. It was a very moving moment. He was, uh, I say, he was perfectly uh, conscious and perfectly alert. I have no doubt about that. Um, but he was having uh, extreme difficulty breathing. His breathing was very, very labored, and it was very sad for me to see him that way. You know, it was, must have been terrible suffering to have to keep sort of gasping for breath. 